Hello everyone, this is Ray, and today we're going to be taking a look at a dev blog that's been released this morning, or this morning for me, it could be a different time for you guys. Uh, but yes, for 12.6 closed test, this shows you the early access for Spanish cruisers, a new mode called Concealed Maneuvers, Sea Battles, and a whole lot more. So this is dev blog 451. If you guys want to check it out, just go on the Wilds dev blog page and you can pretty much find this on the top of the list a bunch of new stuff early access spanish cruisers shows you the new event that they're having right new port it looks amazing by the way new camouflages and then here we go concealed maneuvers new concealed maneuvers temporary battle type will start in update 12.6 so that's two updates from now next week is going to be 12.5 so about like a good month or so the main idea behind this battle type is to test the new mechanics intended to be used aboard the upcoming aircraft carriers so these are the carriers supposedly supposed to be having the new uh the new armament type which is smokescreen and also mine lane so battles will be held in a 9 versus 9 format utilizing tier 7 and tier 8 cruisers destroyers battleships and aircraft carriers so we'll be seeing tier 8 carriers both regular aircraft carriers and new ones will be able to participate in the battle type and sometimes may occur that a battle is fought without the presence of any of the new carriers. Even in battles without carriers, players will be able to complete special combat missions and earn rewards. So basically this is going to be a, a test bed for the new carriers. Sometimes you'll go into a game without them and regardless of whether they're there or not, you'll still gain uh, progress to your new combat missions that they'll be implementing. New aircraft carriers will be present by Kikaku and Concord Bridge, clones of the Shokaku and Lexington, but with new mechanics and changed parameters. Okay, so these are going to be just test bed. They are not new ships that they will be adding permanently. These are just test beds, just like how they're using test beds for the unique upgrade test uh, testing so far. Right now, we have MVR and Petropavlos. So this is basically going to be acting as the same way. These ships will be distributed as rentals for the duration of the event, and they can only be used in concealed maneuvers battle type only in this game mode. Main differences between the new ships and their branch sister ships will be the presence of two new squad consumables, smoke curtain generator, and airdropped minefield. So now let's go into the details of the new carrier and her new armament. So the Kikaku will be able to deploy a smoke screen with her attack aircraft. Smoke curtain generator works the same as regular ships. Regular attack aircraft will be replaced by tactical ones, which will help Kikaku to use smoke curtain generator more efficiently. Tactical attack aircraft are equipped with boosters and consist of only one attack flight and do not return to the carrier. So this is the same mechanics as the other carriers like Hornets, um, Carpet Bomber, the, the, the B-25 tactical squadrons. It's going to work basically the same way as the Super CV tactical squadrons. This is just going to be just another way for them to just test it out for the smoke curtain generator. It'll be interesting. So the Kikaku will have base Shokaku torpedo bombers, the non-researchable ones, and more of the researchable AP bombers will be available on deck. Torpedo bombers are Shokaku's strongest source of damage, and so for the Kikaku, we decided to shift focus away from them by weakening the torpedo bombers and reinforcing the other squadrons of the ship. That's pretty interesting. So basically, they want to let her have some type of game impact, but also in trade for having this type of utility, where you can become act like somewhat of a supporting type of carrier, you're going to be running with your stock torpedo bombers. And Shokaku's stock torpedo bombers are very tragic. They're basically the Ryujos. You have, I believe, what, 10 in reserves at stock. It's kind of suffering. So we'll see how this goes. People are mainly going to be playing this for the smoke screen anyways, but they still gave her a way to deal with ships uh, when needed. So the Concord Bridge. Bombers will be able to call a special airstrike that will drop the mines. See a little mine there. That's pretty cool how they, they basically made a new plane and designed the mine just for this, which is pretty cool. By activating the airdrop minefield consumable, a circular area is created in the current coordinates of the squadron that is then filled with mines. Minefields consist of a large number of separate mines that can't deal damage 
immediately, they will need time to become activated. This is going to be acting similarly to how current fighter squadrons are placed. You go to a location, press your button, fighters are spawned, takes them a little bit to arrive to the destination, but you do see the circle on the minimap. And once they're readied up and arrive to the destination, then they'll start to have their little patrolling um, phase. It's going to work the same way for the mines. You go to an area, press the button with a consumable. I'm assuming you're going to start seeing these planes fly in just like how airstrikes or how just how the arms race planes are coming in to, to drop these mines and after a while once the mines go into the water and activate then it's going to start zoning out the enemy no one's going to be wanting to go near this they explode on collision and have a high chance to cause flooding they remain active for several minutes and are mainly used as a zoning tool mines can be destroyed with depth charges and depth charge air strikes Ooh. okay so they gave them a a counter that's pretty neat actually wait Destroy with depth charges. But how are you supposed to depth charge a mine unless it's splash damage? I guess it's splash damage, right? Because the ship can't even depth charge it because they have to go on top of it, which is going to be really weird. So I'm assuming it's going to be splash damage. But my question is, how much how much HP are these mines going to have for, th for these splashes to actually remove the mine itself? When a player destroys a set amount of mines, the whole minefield will disappear. Concord Bridge will have base Lexington's torpedo bombers. Her attack aircraft will be armed only with Tiny Tim rockets and they will have increased damage. That's very, very spicy. They will also have increased HP, reduced aircraft preparation time, and reduced the penalty of aiming while attacking. These are actually, this is actually insane. So for those of you that don't know, Lexington's never take Tiny Tim rockets on her squadrons. She has a choice between two squadrons. And as you can see here, these are the Tiny Tims up here. And then these are the HFARS equipped planes. Usually you will never pick the Tiny Tims because the rocket count in these planes per plane in the attacking uh, flight, it's just not enough for you to, it's not, it's not consistent enough for you to really use them on anything but battleships. Um, so usually, Usually you just stick with the HFARs, but if they're increasing the damage, buffing the HP, reducing the prep time, and reducing the penalty of aiming, that's going to be very, very huge. Because Tiny Tim Rockets, this is for all Tiny Tim style rockets, so the Lexington, Saipan, the Midway, and also Soviet carrier style rockets, their aiming penalty while attacking or prepping up the attack is really, really bad. You move a little bit and you'll see your reticle just expand to an enormous size. So you have to keep a really steady aim on that reticle on your flight during the uh, attack strike. If they're reducing this, that's going to mean she's going to be really consistent with these Tiny Tim rockets. It's going to be really good to use. So that's going to be really neat to see how easy it is to use them. Because these other buffs that they're giving to these Tiny Tim rockets are pretty good. The new event shows good results. We plan to use new mechanics to bring back the carriers that were removed from the game in update 0.8.0. Yeah, that's going to be pretty neat. Uh, so here are the stats for the Shokaku copy and then the Concord Bridge stats. These are basically just the same thing. Just copy paste it except for the Kikaku, the torpedo bombers are the stock ones. So you have 12 on deck when usually the Shokaku will carry 15 on deck stock. Yeah, that's going to be really interesting. These stats are pretty much just copy pasta. Increased dive bombers that you're seeing here that they spoke of, it's not even that much, it's 18. And I believe the regular amount for the upgraded dive bombers is 15 or 14. So this is not that significant of an increase. But uh, then again, I don't think that they want these carriers to be focused on damage output. And then the Concord Bridge, these, this is going to be pretty crazy. You have 60 second regeneration, you have increased damage, HP, and uh, wow. That's going to be really interesting. Um, main thing here is going to be the aiming buff that they're giving this thing. That's something that I really am interested in looking into. Hopefully it does come soon so I can take a look at it, but we just got to wait. Other than that, everything else is just the same, right? So but yeah, uh, mine laying and smoke screen. I mean, this, is, this has been in testing for a while. It's been announced in early testing for ages. Um, now they're showing it to you guys, to everyone else. I've already seen the smoke deployment system. So I hope you guys are excited for this as well. It is very different. It's something new to the game, that's for sure. So so it's uh it's gonna be something but yeah i'm pretty excited for it uh i think one thing you can probably do, i believe what they said was it's gonna be dropped pretty quickly and 
is going to be in a path as well but the thing is the uh, the action time is not going to be that long or something like that i need to look into it they announced this um other section but yeah that's basically be it for, for the kikaku and also for the conquer bridge copies of the shokaku and the lexington unfortunately they didn't decide to add in the previously removed carriers for this test which makes sense i mean they're it's still not going to be for a while so at least this is the first step forward to see our returning carriers from uh that was removed in 8.0 so but yeah let me know what you guys think of course this is going to be changing things up quite a bit uh of course the community is not going to be very happy about this which is understandable but honestly i think now that we have subs i don't think anything can get much worse than subs especially when it comes to support cvs i mean it seems like they don't want the support cvs to be more focused around damage but more about utility which is fine because there are a lot of ships like that that have a whole bunch of consumables and are mainly viewed as utility um ships like destroyers or cruisers but their damage output is kind of suffering or if they do want them to be damage output utility um focused ships they make them very squishy so we'll see how this goes this new um mechanic to the public to everyone to uh, to try out but yeah definitely i think that this is something to be looking forward to it's gonna spice things up just a bit and um if these guys are not gonna be focused around damage then i think it's gonna be okay to be added to the game i don't think it's gonna be as disruptive as how submarines were we all know facing submarines is like the worst thing you can possibly imagine that happens to you in this game you have depth charges and you're facing a like 2501 that's constantly just zoning you out yeah that's fun but yeah let me know what you guys think this is gonna be the end of this video it's just a short one talking about my thoughts just reading through this, this new dev plot that they uploaded earlier today so uh yeah i want to know what you guys to think about this whether you guys are excited as a carrier player or as a non-carrier player um we can probably just all agree that this is going to be something very different good or bad well that's up in the air anyways i'm out peace